What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? My name is Josh Basil, and I'm your co-host today on today's show. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney, focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. I'm Nova Craven. I'm your other co-host for today's show. I'm a proud First Olympic athlete and employee for First Olympic International. I play bocce, basketball, and about any other sport you can think of. I love Special Olympics in the work our organization does to promote friendship, respect, and, of course, inclusion. In collaboration with the Berlin Local Organizing Committee, Inclusion Revolution Radio and Accessibility have teamed up to release a podcast miniseries highlighting the Special Olympics World Games Berlin 2023. Guests will include athletes, coaches, volunteers, ambassadors, and technical delegates involved in the games. We believe it's important to showcase all of the amazing work that goes into the World Games and how it serves as a catalyst for building a more inclusive world. Today, we will be talking with Regan Hopley, who will be representing Team Canada, the Special Olympics World Games in Berlin. Regan has been an athlete for 15 years and has collected some impressive hardware during her career. She has dominated in her sports of athletics, winning a total of 75 medals. Welcome, Regan, to the Inclusion Revolution Radio Podcast. We are so excited to have you here today. Hi, Regan. Yeah, we are, we are absolutely excited and your 75 medals, that's incredible. But before we, well, let's just dive right into it. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Introduce yourself. Well, my name is Regan. I'm from a small town called LaSalle, Manitoba, just outside of Winnipeg I'm in Canada. Uh, I've been in Special Olympics for 15 years now, and I love it. And I'm part of an amazing club team in Winnipeg, and I've been on the team for 10 years. That's, a, that's awesome. And I know you, with the World Games and everything you love games so let's let's play a quick game here what what comes to mind when i say the word the following words inclusivity accessibility sport, sports and determination strength because it takes strength to get to these levels and to get to our world games and like with with that strength how much did you have to put into it out training and work like to tell us about kind of what went back into that to to, to be a medalist Oh, it took a lot of training and mental work. Um, when I wanted when I wanted something bad enough, I knew what I had to do, and I knew I had to keep fighting and not give up on myself and keep pushing forward and not never give up. I love that. Until I achieve my goal. I'd love to know more about your background in the Special Olympics. How did you get how did you get involved and what sports did you play? In two thousand eight, uh, a coach from a club team approached me because he had found out that I had an intellectual disability when I was volunteering at a track meet in Winnipeg. And, of course, I, um, when I got um, um, approached, I wanted to take up the opportunity. So that following fall, I joined my first special O team. And then in 2012, I joined uh, my first track team. And I've been in track since 2011-12 until today. That is amazing. Totally amazing. Just yeah. keep up the good work. Thank you. Tell me more about your training process leading up to Berlin Games. Well, right now I'm training three times a week. Uh, mon Sunday, Monday, no, Sunday, Thursday, um, Tuesdays. Um, um, I will be getting a personal trainer in the coming weeks. And I don't know what days a week I'll, I'll be training with that person. But I train three times a week right now. And um, my training regimen like, varies to every practice. Some days I do longer runs. Some days I do... Um, corners and some days I do um, like broken thousands. Mm -hmm. Wow, even a personal trainer, that is <laughs> wow. Yeah. Gotta get cool. Ready for the games. cool, 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 cool. I love Can't that. Can't wait. Can't wait. What, to... what was it like to, to have your dream come true with participating at the World Games? It's like 
it's amazing, really. I get um, like being able to experience these games is going to be a, like a life changing thing for me. Yes, this is my second games, but it doesn't matter if it's your first or second games. It's still going to be like a life ex life of time experience, being able to experience a world stage, experiencing athletes from around the globe, and meeting amazing people and meeting amazing athletes. Have you have you been to Germany before? I have not, and I'm actually really excited to be going to Europe because I actually have ancestry from Germany. There you go. So well, welcome back to the homeland, and you're going to be fi fighting for gold again. I, I, I expect that. Yeah. Um, what would you tell other athletes who would, who would want, who want to be where you are, where you're um, at? I would tell them, keep fighting. Don't give up on yourself. If you believe you can do something, you will. But if you believe you can't, you will never achieve your goal. That is a great answer. And and always putting yourself out there and showing what you can, you, you never know what's possible until you try. And I think you're a testament to that. Thank you. And why is it so important uh, for the Special Olympics and really other organizations to host large scale events like the World Games? Because it shows athletes like us that we do fit in and that we do deserve the spotlight just like any other para or mainstream Olympic athlete out there. It shows us that we have a place in sport too. And that matter it, just as good. And so it's like, it's, it's a teaching moment at the same time of having competition, but it kind of paints a picture of the world of what's possible. It shows people just... like that are normal, that people like us can do what they can do. Nothing can hold us back. It's all, it's all about inclusion. Let, let us exactly. participate. Let us, let us, let's have a fighting chance to, to dance and win a medal. And I just, I'm still in all 75 medals. That's, it's an incredible feat. I need to definitely catch up with that. I definitely need to catch up with that one. What has been your favorite experience with Special Olympics? Oh, I have a lot of favorite experiences. Um, I have really good experiences from nationals I've been to in the past. Like in Nova Scotia, I got to go to the Atlantic Ocean for the first time. And I got a gold medal in the pentathlon. And I made some new friends out there. And then my number one favorite experience was has to be my first World Games in Dubai because that experience was, like, amazing. Like, that's a once-in-a-lifetime trip and a once-in-a-lifetime experience where you get to go to a country that is very diverse and very good, like, hospitable and very good to people who aren't from there. And it's an amazing experience. What was I, – I, I wanted to ask this, too. What was it like winning that first gold? Metal. Oh, wow. Um, very, like, fulfilling. Like, when I got that, got up on that podium with the gold, <laughs> I got emotional. I was very happy. And my coach from home was there to see me compete. So seeing her standing in front of me, me on the, on the gold medal podium, was a very special moment for me because I got to share that experience with my coach from home. Yeah. And, uh, over the years, have you made a lot of friendships through the games? I have. I have a. I have a whole variety of friends from across the country. I even have friends in your guys' country in different states in the U.S. Sweet. Well, uh, we're friends now. Definitely, you know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing to you know be able to you know be on that podium you know and have my mother watching me too and they're just you know when yeah. I when I found out I found out we we got the gold medal in the. For the team's one, I literally, I ran to my coach, of course, but after I ran to my coach, I really ran to my mother and was like, gave her the biggest hug, and she was like, had tears running in her eyes, and definitely, um, it was just amazing to just have, you know, that person there to be there when you win that one special medal, and just definitely, it was just amazing, and it definitely, I... I I bet you both were crying like crazy. It was just amazing. To My coach and I, yeah. Uh, there's a picture of her hugging me, and mm -hmm. in the photo, it looks like she's crying. She was so proud of me. Absolutely. I can, I can feel it. I feel like I'm there with you talking about it. Yeah. And what are What do you think are some of the biggest gaps currently for businesses prioritizing kind of access and inclusion for, for people with disabilities? Like sponsors? Sponsors, businesses, you go out. To the, to uh, on the internet, you go to stores, you go anywhere. Or, or do you feel like businesses are welcoming enough 
of of athletes in the Special Olympics or yeah. people with disabilities to be a part of this yes. world. The sponsors and stuff like that are extremely important because they help sponsor for us athletes to be able to go to a games or to be able to go on our trips to nationals and all that. We wouldn't be we wouldn't have an organization without our sponsors. And do what do you think businesses could do better at? To continue to include people, doing more like inter- like uh, like interviews with athletes uh, in Special Olympics and promoting it more. So keeping the conversation going, yeah, yeah. The world. keep promoting it. Break breaking stereotypes, right? Yeah. Um, like did um when you went to what's the last when's the last last um competition place you went to? My last major competition I competed at was in Niagara Falls in Ontario. Mm-hmm. I was at the Canada Summer Games. Mm-hmm. I got a gold and a silver in the a gold in the 200 and a silver in the 100 meter dash. Mm-hmm. Those were the last major competition I was I took part in. Did and they like did they sponsor really like shoes or hats or and stuff? They're like oh, I'm trying to think of what their sponsor was. Um, they had a variety. Uh, Canada mm-hmm. Games is a different organization. They're not mm-hmm. solely special. O. It's also generic athletes in there too. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Oh my god, I'm trying to think of who the sponsor no way, was. No mm-hmm. Pretty sure Tech was one of their sponsors. Okay, okay. And uh, Sports Canada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like and the Canada Games, obviously organization. Like, like um, the Brooks sponsored shoes for um when we went to Seattle. Brooks well, sponsors cool. shoes and um you know they um yeah I'm actually wearing my shoes today actually it was just I have like two pairs of them and definitely um, I own Brooks as well actually I have yeah. a pair for regular shoes that I wear all the time and then I have my other ones that are more expensive that I wear yeah. solely for training yeah yeah these are just I mean I, they're so comfortable I've done yeah. um and why is it so important uh, as a Special Olympics athlete to have access and inclusion on social media and on websites. So that people can see our journey and follow our journey along the way. Dude, I mean, how I, long I have you been telling your journey that, on I can social do. media? That is definitely, that's amazing. That I just, I, I don't have words to, you know, piggyback on that one because definitely, you know, promoting Special Olympics on social media and just, you know, this podcast, you know, um, I've a lot of people have reached out, like you know, they we put it on Facebook, we put ads on Facebook, and people have just reached out, like not not knowing we haven't reached out to them, they reach out to us, and it's like, wow, you know, how do I really... get involved and all that? And how do I join? exactly, exactly, exactly? It's I, just amazing. I actually got one of my schoolmates when I was in 10th or 11th grade, 11th grade, to join Special O with me. Because he was so intrigued by my experience with it, so he wanted to join, and he did. So he did. Absolutely, that's awesome. amazing. That is, that and if, amazing. if somebody wanted to follow you on social media, where could they go to 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 learn more? Uh, my Facebook account and my Instagram; those are the two major platforms that I mostly post on. I love that. And I'm um, guessing just if they search your name, it'll pop up. My Instagram is Regan Elizabeth at under slash 22, and my Facebook is my first and last name. Okay. Beautiful. Sweet. In a few words, could you answer the question? What does accessibility and inclusion mean, mean to you? Means, well, like, um, it means basically to have um, everyone united. It means no one discriminates anyone. No one treats anyone any different than any other person. We all treat each other as an equal. I love that. Excellent answer. I love that too. And thank you, Regan, for joining today's episode on Inclusion Revolution Podcast and Spotlight Session Collaboration. We are beyond impressed with your dedication and commitment to not only becoming a better athlete each day, but a leader in the movement for a more inclusive world. We are both rooting for you to bring back some medals and for Team Canada. And just thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I can't say enough how much this really has been. Uh, I'm telling you, like, you will blossom, you know. People have been, you know, when I talk about Special Olympics, people are like, 
Paralympic is not like prairie people Paralympic and stuff. I'm like, no, that's just it's a different Special Olympics. It's Special Olympics that have people have that are wheelchair bound. People are blind. And people are deaf. Deaf. Uh, and I deaf. actually have an athlete on my club team this year. His name is Christian Garrow. Mm -hmm. uh, he is deaf and he talks with American Sign Language. He doesn't. He he's nonverbal. He mm -hmm. has a cochlear implant, so he can hear sounds, but he can't mm -hmm. understand what they are. So we write things down for him because he can write and then talk in sign language, but he can't speak our language. He can't. Right. Speak other Right. I have a colleague of mine who does powerlifting and he's blind and it's like Ben, you he I mean he can lift. I haven't seen him lift, but he he's got him several gold medals and it's like wow, you know, just yeah. to and definitely but um definitely, you know, can't wait to, you know, see that, you know. And definitely uh, um you have my permission to definitely post uh, this podcast everywhere you like and definitely just tell your friends about this podcast and definitely, you know, maybe we can get more collaboration with Canada and definitely, you know, it's just been amazing to talk to you about how you're so excited about World Games and I know you're just going to blow it out of the park. I'm just like, with a track, you definitely got to send me a video or something like <laughs> Yeah, like, if you add me on social media, you can follow my journey and you can reach out to me so that you can get to know me more and I can tell you more about my experience. And yeah, just all. just have um your 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 person send us your social media account and definitely I will definitely hit yeah. your follow and we'll, we'll all be posting together. And yeah, 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 definitely. We'll definitely. Yeah, and you guys, even after this, you guys, if you guys add me on social media, you can follow, see me, like follow my journey between now and June because I'll okay, be posting on. my journey about how well I do at my regional meets leading up to the game. All right, it's yeah. Reagan. Yeah. It's, stuff is going all for You said it's Reagan, it's Reagan. Reagan Elizabeth under slash 23. And Facebook, in my, no, Facebook, Facebook is Reagan, my first and last name. I a R E G A N. Which one? We'll, we'll, H no, we will, we'll definitely get it to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. definitely. But definitely. Again, thank you so much, Regan, for being our first guest on, our, on the podcast. Uh, and just wonderful having you. And thank you for all of our guests for staying till the end. Take care, everyone. You too. Yeah. Bye. You too.